What's up, everybody? This is Cinema Drew from FN Gaming. So we just we shot this weekly plug-in. We got we got a new microphone, and we're not quite sure how to use it. I don't all the settings for it yet. So sound is off on this weekly plug-in. We apologize. We're working on it. We're getting it fixed. So hopefully by next week, we'll have all the kinks worked out. So appreciate y'all watching. Appreciate y'all supporting, and uh, yeah, we'll get it fixed. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the weekly plug-in. We've got a good one for you this week. I am Cinema Drew. I'm Jelly Huey. We're Reffin Gaming. Let's just jump into and it. Let's go. forget everybody we also stream every monday wednesday friday and starting this week every thursday on our twitch channel at twitch.tv forward slash effing gaming i still stream also on my personal channel which is twitch.tv forward slash jelly uh right now still playing through the mass effect need to finish that i've been kind of dragging my feet but i think i'm probably like at least halfway through it and i don't know what we got going on on the F gaming Twitch. I'm uh, going through 2K20, playing through the originals. Uh, I have Bump of the Night. I have the uh, uh, the Wastelanders, stuff like that. So I'm I'm doing that, I'm going through that, beating that stuff. That's what I'm doing. Cool. And, and Thursday night. Thursday night. Every. Thursday for F and Thursday night at seven o'clock for some great wrestling. F and W wrestling. F and W wrestling. Actually, technically, it's just F and wrestling. It's F and W for short. It's gonna be good. Yeah. Be there. It's gonna be fun. Starting Thursday. Starting tomorrow. Today. Today's Thursday. Thursday. Yep. Wow! So when this comes out, we'll, we'll we've already had one show. Yeah, we have a new one this week. So yeah, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, twelve thirty every morning, or every I guess every afternoon, twelve thirty now. Yeah, twelve, twelve ish. Yeah, twelve, twelve o'clock. All right. So something that I'm excited about is there's a. What I thought was season two is actually not season two. There's a new Gindy Tarkovsky's Primal coming out October 7th. It's hard to say. It's a mouthful. Yeah. October Tarkovsky. That's like next week. That's next week, yeah. Or close, yeah. We're close. No, a week and a half. Week and a half. Uh, the, if, so, if you're not familiar with this show, it's on HBO Max. And Gindy Tarkovsky is a super famous well super respected uh filmmaker and he's finally doing this animated show for uh cartoon network that is under hbo now called primal and it's about this caveman and the dinosaur and they're trying to get along in prehistoric <clears throat> world and it's extremely violent not and, kids. and it not for kids it's extremely gory and violent, uh, but it is absolutely beautiful. It is fun to watch. And the story is very compelling, and uh, yeah, it was awesome. The first few episodes, first five episodes, aired a few months ago. Uh, I don't remember. When, I don't remember when it when. came out. It was a while uh, back. But yeah, so the rest of season one is going to air October 7th with another five episodes. And then it got picked up for season two for another 10 episodes in 2021. So it's fantastic. It's a fantastic show. Uh, I love it. I, it's great. So stay in touch. Look, check that out. If you haven't watched it yet, I highly recommend it. Not for kids. <laughs> Not for kids. Yeah, and that's it. I just wanted to mention that. All right. So I'm sure a lot of you have heard by now 
which is kind of old news, but still somewhat fresh. <laughs> so Xbox bought the parent company for Bethesda, which is Zenimax Media, which means they now own Bethesda Softworks, Bethesda Game Studios, id Software, Zenimax Online, um, Arcane, Machine, uh, Machine Games, uh, Tango Networks, and Alpha Dog, which means Xbox now owns Skyrim, Doom, uh, what else? Fallout, Fallout, uh, Dishonored, Wolfenstein. I want it all. So, I think Xbox is fixing to have a good good lineup. Yeah. I mean, it may not be a launch, but... Actually, I don't mind this. Even though I'm more of a Sony guy, I was, I've been on record for saying that I want Xbox to do good because I don't want Sony getting comfortable. So, I like this. I like the fact that they're, this is they a, have it. But what does that mean? It doesn't mean uh, much. It just means that they own them. They own them, and they're making the money off of it. There's no guarantee that they're all going to be, you know, Xbox exclusives now. That's a that's a lot of money to miss out on. Yeah. Especially when they spent $7.5 billion to acquire Zenimax. That's crazy. That's more than Disney paid for Marvel. Yeah. That's insane. I hope this is good news for Bethesda because their name is not very good right now. It's kind of being run through the mud on their own intuition, their own fault. And uh, so hopefully this gives them a kick in the pants to start stepping it up again. They used to be one of the most revered names in the com- in the business. It was like Rockstar, Rocksteady, Bethesda, and CZ Project Red oh, since... Uh, since The Witcher came out and uh, after 76 releases and the debacle and everything that followed it, their name is <laughs> kind of mud right now. So we'll see. We'll see what happens when they have at E3 they teased Elder Scrolls 6. So that game better be amazing. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know. Hopefully, this is a good move for both of them. I would like to see them pick back up. I used to love Bethesda. They put out some great games. Uh, the Elder Scrolls is my favorite, one of my favorite franchises. Uh, I love Mass Effect. And so, uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully this is a cool move. Hopefully this will happen. Well, why did you say Mass Effect? It's EA. No, uh, not Mass Effect. Uh, Fallout. Oh. Um, but yeah, so a lot of these games... Going straight to Game Pass. Nice. And being with the new Game Pass, you may not have to buy a new game ever new again. Bethesda getting new. New Bethesda. Yeah. I mean, if you if you have Xbox Game Pass, you can get it for the for the Xbox and for Microsoft and for like Windows. Nice. So you can play a lot of these games on PC, which is crazy. Yeah. But a lot of these older games are coming to uh, Game Pass as well, like. Elder Scrolls, uh, Oblivion, and Skyrim. That's, that's just cool. insane. That's a, <laughs> that's a good move, Xbox, Microsoft. That's a that's a pretty powerful move. Uh, to bring you up back up Sony level. That's. I mean, because I, I mean, Elder Scrolls Six is gonna sell like crazy. Oh yeah. And I'm pretty sure that the Elder Scrolls, the uh, the Fallout games, stuff like that. They're still, they're not. It's not like they're going to be exclusive all of a sudden. Now they may have some other studios that put out exclusive content for Xbox, but uh, the big games are still going to be, you know, multi-platform. But if you have Game Pass, you don't have to pay for them, more than likely. Yeah, unless they get super greedy. But yeah, so a lot of these games that are they've already been announced for exclusivity on the PS5. Yeah. But Microsoft owns them now. <laughs> they're still gonna be exclusives. I think I wonder if they're just gonna be strictly launch exclusives. But I know they're under contract. Maybe. Yeah, like, so unless Microsoft wants to buy out the contract, but I doubt that because 
That's a waste That's of money. That's a lawsuit. And they're not going to sue for Bethesda money. They'll sue for Microsoft money. So they'll jack that price up. So they're probably just going to let them keep exclusive. 7.5. I can't get over that. Wow. That's crazy. That's more than they even paid for the Star Wars franchise. Like, they paid for Lu- LucasArts. Disney paid for LucasArts and paid less yeah. than what Microsoft what paid. $4 billion, I think. Yeah. That's a lot of money. A lot of studios, too, though. Think about those games like Doom. That, that was a huge game. The last one that came out was awesome. Wolfenstein has been kind of man lately. The, the first one was good. Games, the last one was man. Was not very the very good. last one they came out with was I, I never played it because I heard it was garbage. Yeah, I've seen that it was garbage. So yeah, a big move, big moves happening. Bethesda and Microsoft. I, I like it. Uh, I think I think it's a it's a good move. It's something they desperately needed because they've been getting kind of obliterated by Sony the their with their exclusives and their release dates. And now we know that the pricing is equal. Uh, yeah. So they needed something extremely positive, yeah. and this was it. This may have tilted it even for me. Yeah. Maybe. Like I've always been an Xbox fanboy. I've had. Xbox since day one, and I'm a, it's just like ingrained in me. Like the Duke yeah. was one of my favorite controllers, and to hear that they've gotten something like this going on, it's got me leaning more towards yeah. that. Yeah, I mean, I probably will still end up getting both consoles, but like I always liked that Xbox. I just uh, my preference is Sony. Uh, their games I like the controller better, but I always want Xbox to do good. Competition is great. Yes, it is. And I want Sony to know that if you start messing up and getting too greedy, that there's somebody else there that is somebody will else. take your spot. Look at me, sure. Look at me, sure. I'm the captain now. And so, I like it. So, I just hope Bethesda starts doing better, man. Y'all got to do better than you did with 76. That was a train wreck. And uh, so hopefully you learned your lesson, and hopefully Microsoft gets on your keister. And, yeah, hopefully uh, they get shit done. Yeah, and put out some, you know, the other scroll six better be awesome, because now you got people that are watching you like a hawk, and they're gonna nitpick all the things that you used to be able to get away with. You're not gonna be able to get away with anymore. And so, but now you have Microsoft on top of that. That's so. If you mess up, it's not just Bethesda; it's Microsoft, and it's Xbox. So you, so hopefully that gives them enough pressure to really put out something good. It would be nice. Just like maybe it'll be like a change of pace. Yeah. To help everything flow a little better. Yeah. Who knows? But I, I don't think that they'll they'll have all these. All these things going exclusive to either one anymore. No. Maybe like some big titles working for specifically the Xbox, but I don't think there's going to have any exclusives for the PlayStation moving forward. No. Especially since Microsoft owns it. Yeah. Then I'm going to let that happen. So, speaking of awesome companies, CD Projekt Red is getting close to bringing out cyberpunk but they decided to make some changes that are dangerous in my opinion what happened so they decided that they're going to shorten the campaign story mission the main story mission because people were complaining about how long The Witcher 3 was, and that they couldn't beat it, and that it was taking too long, and, and my it. head hurts, and, you know, my fingers hurt because it's taking longer. Why? <laughs> God. Why? <laughs> and so they decided to take those complaints and do something about it and shorten the story campaign for cyberpunk and that is ridiculous i mean come on dude if you're too weak if a video game is too much for you then i don't know what else you have to do maybe you need to go test pillows or something 
because <laughs> because that's ridiculous and it, it's not the people that are complaining about it's one thing but the fact that CD Projekt Red is actually caving to it and they've been doing this stuff with Cyberpunk they've been so they'll, they'll try to stand their ground a little bit, but they've been caving in too much a little bit here and there to try to appease SJWs or try to appease people. And I don't like that because it's a dangerous road to go down. Because you start getting too popular, you start getting too big, and then you start letting people make your decisions for you instead of you making decisions. And that never works out because people don't know what they want. I mean, you can look at, look at, or you start worrying about your budget now and you start worrying about what is going to sell the most. And that's really what it comes down to is, oh, if we don't please these people, they're not going to buy our game. So we're going to have to do what we can to please them. Oh, they don't like the story mission being too long. So let's shorten it. So more, more people will buy our game. But we're already on board to buy your game. You don't have to try to please anybody else. We're already going to buy it. The only thing that you can do now is mess it up to where we no longer want to buy it because you've tried to please everybody. You didn't please everybody with Witcher. Look how amazing that game turned out. People are still talking and playing about that game. And so, and this one's going to be the same thing if you don't mess it up. So they're going to, starting to get a little bit too big for their own good, and they're starting to cave in to the masses. But not even it's not even the masses. It's just the few people that are complaining, that are outspoken. And so the, no, no, the, they came out and they said that there's still going to be plenty of side missions. There's still going to be plenty of stuff to do in the world. They're just going to shorten the campaign. But I think that's still ridiculous. Don't shorten the campaign. Do Don't do that. They're thinking like 12 to 15 hours. Is that yeah. what I'm reading? Yeah. They're gonna. They're trying to save a lot off of it. No. And so. It's an RPG be careful. for Christ's sake. Yeah. Be, yeah. I mean, this is this is this is uh, you're treading some dangerous waters here. I mean, you start giving in to them, and then next thing you know, your game sucks, and then next thing you know, you're the next Bethesda. Oh, because people are mad because it took 70 hours. Yeah. You know, people want to beat it you buy the game for overnight, and people are wanting to beat it like over the weekend. But when they can't do that, they're like, oh, it's too long. I don't want to beat it. Dude, I play games for like two or three. I, I I literally just beat Ghost of Tsushima like two weeks ago, three weeks ago. I still haven't beat it. That game's been out forever, and I'm not complaining because it's too long. I mean, I can if I wanted to sit down and beat that game quickly, I can. I just don't want to. I like taking long. I love long campaign missions. I love long story missions. I like being engrossed into the story, and I want to be able to experience this and. You know, if it, as long as it's good and as long as it's engaging, I I want, a, I want a long to keep story. It. Yeah. Like I don't understand why would you want a seventy hour, a twelve hour game when they can give you the seventy hour game yeah, for the same price? Yeah. You're gonna get more. Like I don't want. That's too much. I want less for my money. And it, it, it's already there. That's the problem. It's already there. They're taking it out now. So I don't uh, I don't know if they're going to take it out and move it to side quests so that you can do it if you want to or you don't have to do it. I, I don't know. But I think the fact that they're actually doing this at all ridiculous. is ridiculous. Like, come on, CD Projekt Red, man. I, we love you guys. Oh, uh, I mean, we've been rooting for you since Witcher 3. Dude, when Witcher 3 came out, man, they gave you everything. They gave you all the stuff. Like, you open the thing, you had the book for it, you had the, I still have the Witcher little keychain in my truck hanging on my uh, cigarette. Uh, Mine's hanging my from lighter, the, my cigarette lighter. From some beads. <clears throat> yeah. But it's it's hanging from the rearview mirror. And you, you open the stuff, you get the CD, you get the soundtrack for it, you, you get this thank stuff. You note? Yeah, thank you note. So I was like, dude, I love CG Project Red, and yeah. I love you guys, and I want you guys to do amazing, but if you keep doing this kind of stuff, you're going to start losing your real fans, the people that actually do support you, and actually love you, Play and love your game through company. the entire game. Yeah. So stop trying to people please. Just put out a great game, and people will buy it, and they will buy it 
like crazy they will buy your dlc if you put out great if your original game is amazing they'll buy your dlc just like they did with blood and wine uh i beat it though i haven't i haven't beat that i've beat the original the rest of it's i've beat yeah i beat the game i think i was the first one out of us five that to beat it and no, then yeah. you me i don't know nick I'll... peeps and rob was you the first? i thought i was the first one to beat i don't think i was i don't remember it doesn't matter pierre got got sidetracked by the witch by the gwent yeah then, i didn't do gwent a whole lot then nick beat it and then rob just beat it like a couple months ago <laughs> but yeah so so stop stop it cg project red there is a reason for long games yeah for people like me no yeah we like to delve into the story that enjoy the story we want to get away we don't want yeah. to have to life is hard we want long games <laughs> we want some escapism so yeah stop stop giving in to people and they're doing it also with their, their they've been doing it with their creative characters uh, their their creative process and just they're just they're listening too much. <clears throat> and that's it. You need to listen to people to do it. No, no, no. Because if you start doing that, then people are going to turn on you. Make what you want to make, yeah. not what other people want. It's like it's like your it's like this band. Like if you like a band and uh, you get their CD and they're awesome and you love them, and then all of a sudden their CD blows up and becomes super famous. And then, so their next CD comes out, and it's now what everybody, whatever, what all the soup, what all these, uh, what we call them stand in fans that only like them because they're popular. And their second CD sucks because they try to give in, they try to please people instead of just putting out good music. It's like, uh, what's that band? Uh, uh, Evanescence. Perfect example. Perfect example. Evanescence. The first album was amazing, but everybody's like, I think they should have more of that electric guitar in there. It's awesome. But they had like two songs like that on there, and so the next album they did, and it sucked. And they where are they now? Nobody knows. As you're looking at the metrics, you see tremendous numbers of people played through the game really far, but never made it to the end. Well, that's their fault. That is their fault. I don't have the time. You're lying. Yeah, you have the time. If you have the time to play Apex, you have the time to play Fortnite, you have the time to play it's a, Call of Duty, and you have the time to beat that, you just didn't want to. Either, if you got bored with it, that's that's you. That's you taking too long. I don't want a 12 to 15 hour game. Yeah. You look at it, like Skyrim. I've, I've put hundreds of hours into that game. I've put more time into a game with no story. I'm talking like thousands of hours into like arc for for yeah, no story whatsoever. I'm not gonna want to play this after the story's done. Is what I'm getting. If it's good, you will. If you make if you make to your game, hours, no, no. If it's I'll play through it and that'll be it. Yeah, it makes me mad. If it's one of those games to where after you beat it, there's nothing to do. But sometimes that's a problem with all, especially with open world games. Sometimes you beat it and there's literally nothing else to do in the world. Then yes, that's probably accurate. But as long as you feel you, I mean, look at it, Grand Theft Auto. There's, I could put on Grand Theft Auto now and play it and have a good time because no, I'm not even talking about online. I'm talking about just the game, single player game, and have a blast because there's so much stuff to do in the world. So as long as your world is filled with stuff to do, then after I beat it, I'm still going to play it. So you start cutting your story out, then you may run into continuity problems that you don't realize. Like this happens, well, why does this happen? Oh, it's part of that, that cut out. You lose Nobody the story. Knows. No, yeah. It's bullshit. This person says, yes, please. How about five to six hour games played over a night or two? I love Inside and Limbo. To me, they make perfect single player game story. That's ridiculous. <laughs> For a game Stop like being the this, and play some adult, let's play some games. Inside and Limbo are like nothing compared to The Witcher. Yeah. Those are indie games, for one. 
And two, there, yeah. It was long. I get it. 70 hours, maybe too much. I know. I mean, look how much they sold. Uh, but cutting it uh, in a quarter of... Even last five to six hours, you've lost your deck of mind. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's no, ridiculous. Absolutely not. Don't do that. Stop, stop giving in to these people. It made my soul hurt reading that. <laughs> like, not even a lie. That made me hurt. It. Yeah. Just because a select few people are vocal about that they don't speak for the rest of us. They don't speak for everybody. Not at all. Yeah, and that's the thing that people have been realizing now about these SJWs is they don't speak for everybody. They speak for a very small percentage very that small. do not support the game. They don't buy the games or go to the movies or watch the shows. They, they'll, they'll praise you. They'll sing your praises on TikTok or on Twitter, but they won't support it when it matters, which is buying the product, which is watching the product. Perfect bad girls, perfect example. They'll sing your praises on Twitter, but did they watch the show? No, they didn't. Terrible. Don't do it. Batwoman. It's Batwoman. I think they've already done it. What? Cut the Oh yeah, they've already done it. They've already cut it. <clears throat> but stop it. They better give me the rest of it for free. Stop it. It probably won't be free. I paid for it. I will still pay for it. Just give yeah. me the rest of the story. This game needs I'll to hurry it. up and come out before they ruin it. Yeah. By giving in to people. Anyways, that's my rant about that. Well, back to Xbox. You heard about these pre-orders along with, along with the PlayStation. I've heard they were atrocious. So, so uh, well, uh, some people, for a lot of people, it's atrocious. But some people, some people get in, they get theirs, and they're done. Yeah, PSK. So PS5 pre-orders went on early because somebody somewhere was like, "Click, <laughs> let's make that live." <laughs> Bad idea. Uh -huh. So they sold out, and then like I don't remember who was first. Like say Walmart hit click first, and they hit live first on the on the pre-order sales. Mm -hmm. So then somebody else saw it, say Best Buy, and they're like, "Ooh, they're live! I'm gonna do it too." Yeah. Everywhere went live. <laughs> Everywhere sold out within minutes. Dang. I mean, there's already a shortage of them. It's just and now like I'm nobody just... prepared for it. So like the PS5s sold out everywhere. It's supposed to go on again tomorrow, which tomorrow will be. Friday, yeah, last, last Friday, Friday when you watch this. But who knows how fast those are going to be gone? But it's nowhere near as bad as what the Xbox has been going through. <laughs> so a lot of people are getting the wrong console. So like they sign up for the Series X. We talked about this last week. Series Xbox. S. They're buying the Xbox One X, thinking this Xbox Series X. This is why you have problems with your naming. That's why you gotta keep it simple. Is that was that notion that common sense isn't really all that common? People don't read. Yeah, they don't read. Oh, Xbox, Xbox something Xbox else. X, that's it. You gotta keep it simple. P oh, PS4, PS5, super simple. You know what next time it's gonna be? PS6. Nobody is gonna buy a PS4 thinking it's a PS5. If that did, that's a really sleazy and a really good salesperson. <laughs> See? <laughs> you and this car were made for each other. Why fight it? Sure, I got a couple other buyers on the line, but I like your style. Because it's you. Like, somebody with common sense, like me or you, they hear this and they're like, what were these idiots thinking? Like, yeah. read what you're buying. Yeah. But you have some but you have mom some people buying her 13-year-old yeah, like console. The kids and they're like, I got you that new console, yeah. son. And then it's like, uh, it's on sale for 250 bucks. Mom, you got me the wrong freaking thing. <laughs> like, I already have one of these. Yeah. Or even, thanks, mom. <laughs> hey, Jimmy, what'd you get for Christmas? I got an Xbox... What? I got an Xbox X. <laughs> Come on. I do keep having them. We can't. Xbox One X sales jumped up 720, 747%. That's probably on Amazon. 80% of those are mistakes, I bet. Now, was there a. The question is, was did they drop in price now? Because I if they did, that might be some of it, but I'm sure a lot of that was mistakes. People thinking they were getting the Series X when, in fact, they were just getting the One X. 
Xbox One X on Amazon is going for four hundred and five dollars. One X, a One X. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's confusing. It's confusing. currently unavailable for the Series X. <laughs> what? Come on. So yeah. So what I was reading is like, uh, they're like, okay. We're going to launch this thing tomorrow at 8 o'clock or, you know, on Tuesday at 8 o'clock. And then Tuesday at 8 o'clock, Walmart, Best Buy, nothing. There was nothing. They didn't They didn't start it. Nobody hit the button. And then they when they did start it, it just turned into craziness. Like... And there was no, there was no, like, it, this is not completely Microsoft or even Tony's fault. This is Walmart and Best Buy and, and Target and, and GameStop. And this is, this is them not preparing for it. And, and I mean, we have a new console comes out, what, every six or seven years. So it doesn't really count for them to have to change it a lot of stuff for it i mean you just kind of kind of yeah, weather through the season right. jeez yeah just weather through the season and then after it you don't have to worry about it no more i missed the part where that's my problem for another six or seven years and somebody else will be ceo somebody else will be managing that you know you have to out again. but still but they should they should accommodate I mean, can you imagine if, like, Walmart was like, hey, we're going to make this super easy. We're going to build you queues. You can get in. You can set up queue. And you can just hang out there until one's available, and boom, there you go. Yeah, everybody would buy through them. I heard Walmart's not even doing it. Was it Walmart? I think it was Walmart. Not even doing in-person pre-orders. No, yeah. I bet. They probably can't keep it on. They probably can't. Well, they're so... They're afraid of corona. Oh, uh, I figured it was because they just flat couldn't keep them in stock long enough. There are too many sales online. You're probably right, but still. You might check your stores if you're still trying to get yeah. one. Well, I could, like I say, like I PS5, one. somebody like got yeah, one like literally like, okay, I think I'm going to buy one. And went on there, boom, got it, no problem. But yeah, somebody yeah. else, that was two weeks later, finally got one. No, he still ain't got one. I thought he still got one. I don't think so. I thought he said he finally did it. No, I think he's no, he did get an Xbox. Oh, that one, yeah. I wonder if he got an Xbox and One X. How funny <laughs> would that be? Uh, snitch, I'm gonna laugh at you if you got the Xbox One X. By How accident. funny would that be? I feel bad, but I still laugh at you. I'm gonna laugh. But yeah, yeah, big old, big old problem. Another problem they're having is, of course, everybody knew this was scalpers. There's oh been God. Xbox Series X and PS5s on on eBay for a thousand dollars for two thousand dollars. Like people are gonna take advantage of the shortage and try to be douchebags. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know, the, the, the doing the jingle all the way thing, trying to get the Turbo Man. And uh, I'm not a pervert. <laughs> trying to get the Turbo Man doll. <laughs> I'm not a pervert. I just was looking for German man doll. <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah, that's scalpers and plus the series. I don't know. It's just a big old mess. It all it it's usually a big old mess, but it seems to be more so this year because probably through the corona. So everybody, nobody's buying them in the store. Everybody's buying them <laughs> at home. The shortage is already probably was it was already probably obsolete by the time. They came around to actually sell them, it's so crazy. it's just it's just it's just gonna be crazy. So I'm actually pretty glad that I'm not trying to scramble around and get one right now. I can wait. I can wait for a little while. Yeah, I, uh, like I said last week, I'll probably wait until they do the special edition for the. For yeah, I might too. I've never had a special edition system, so I may I may get one. I really I really hope they do one for Final Fantasy because that's the <laughs> one I want. I wish they would have done. I would like to go to Tsushima special edition. Maybe I'm sure there'll probably be a Cyberpunk special edition one. That'd be pretty cool. That would be pretty dope. dope. Okay, so finally, we got one more thing to discuss, and this is another Star Wars update. 
So I know we did one last week, and it got, it got dark, but we got we got another one. This is actually pretty big news, and I don't know. It's not good news either, so sorry about that. <laughs> but, sorry, <laughs> there's been some rumors going around the Mandalorian that are somewhat upsetting. That despite the fact that it's a massive success, and it's really the only really successful Star Wars Series. brand that's come out since Rebels uh, or Rebel Clone Wars. Uh, so yeah, there's some issues going on with it. And the issues are completely around Pedro Pascal. Not the issues that we talked about last week. It has nothing to do with that. This is... So... There's two ways that this rumor goes. So we're, I'm going to try my best to fix this but also what I'm talking about could also be rumor too and maybe no truth to it so keep that in mind so apparently so the bigger rumor is that Pedro Pascal is out of the Mandalorian he's gonna be there for season two but that's it well mostly it so apparently he for a season he's upset that he wants to do more scenes without the Mandalorian helmet on. He wants to show his face some more. He says the helmet's uncomfortable, it's heavy, and he's the star now, so he wants to show his face, more than likely, more or less. You know? They didn't even show his face yet. Yeah, they did. They did it on the, uh, the second to last episode, where the robot took his helmet, the droid took his helmet off. Oh, yeah. For a little bit. So he wants to do more scenes without the helmet. So he approached Filoni, Favreau, and it's like, hey, I want to do more scenes without the helmet on. And they're like, no. <laughs> Not going to happen. Like, so now the, well, the big rumor that probably has absolutely no truth is that he went over their heads to Kennedy Ooh. and was like, hey, I want to do more scenes with my helmet off. Go tell them. Why? I'll make them do that. Why would he go to her? Well, here's the thing. I don't believe that. That doesn't make any sense because she's out of the door anyway. She has absolutely no authority no more. She does by title, but as far as actual authority, <clears throat> she has no say in Star Wars anymore whatsoever. So that would not make sense for him to go to her. At all. Yeah. It wouldn't do nothing. It wouldn't accomplish anything. <clears throat> so the idea was that he went to her, uh, and so she talked to Filoni and Favreau. When they found out that he went overhead, they politely asked him to get the hell off my set. That didn't happen. It didn't happen. That, did, that didn't happen. However, Lucas did visit the set, and Pedro uh, Pascal walked up to him and addressed it to him. It's like, hey, I th I'm tired of wearing the helmet. I need to do more scenes without the helmet. Hoping, and then tried to plead his case with Lucas, hoping that Lucas would talk to Filoni and Favreau about it, and they could come to an agreement. Well, that didn't happen, and Lucas I was like, no, you're a Mandalorian. Mandalorians are known for their, hel their, they have their helmets. They never take their helmets off. Matter of fact, the first season... The entire first season was a lot about him not being able to take his helmet off. Yeah. That's what your character is. is You're the, the Mandalorian. You wear the helmet. And so that didn't work. And so then he started becoming very difficult to work with. He started just taking his helmet off in the middle of a shoot. Like just in the middle of a scene, just taking it off and trying to act with that. And, you know, they'd have to cut and put the helmet back on. Uh, he would I don't be, think he'd be that unprofessional. I don't know. Like, apparently he, yeah, I mean, this is, I mean, this is a rumor, but there actually might be some truth to this, <clears throat> to this part, not the Kennedy part. That's not true. I don't think he'd be that. <clears throat> he started being late to set. He started not knowing his lines, which is what you do if you're an actor and you're, you know, I mean, that's happened before. You know, you start being difficult. You don't care about it. You're mad, and you start throwing a fit. 
and the ways that just ruin everybody's day. And I, I'm, I'm actually, I'm a, I, that's, as a director, I've directed stage plays and I've been an actor. Uh, that's infuriating when somebody doesn't have their lines. It, it's, it's the difference between somebody just messing up a line and when somebody just flat doesn't have it. It's it, it's it's ag- aggravating, and so I, eventually they just they kicked him, they did apparently they did kick him off set, but not because he went to Kennedy, but because he was just being a pain in the ass. So that's the rumor. That's not un- always unheard of though, because that happens. Uh, it happens when actors sometimes. I mean, I don't know. There could be it could be complete garbage, <clears throat> but it's happened before with actors, especially in TV series, especially when you're the star of the show, or, or even in movies. If you're the star, that you start trying to demand things. Because now you're the star, you think the series is wrapped around you, and so you can just do what you want to. And unfortunately, sometimes studios will back the actor, right? Because they paid a lot of money for him. But why? But I mean, the director usually the director should have the authority, and the director should be the one to cause it. But sometimes you get these actors that just get a little bit too big for the britches, and want to start demanding things. But I, I don't get it. you knew what you were signing up for. You knew this was the role, and if it's if it's an uncomfortable thing, then I don't know. I mean, I mean, you, I don't think that's it because they could have probably found ways to make it a little bit more comfortable. But and if, but if it's the thing that you just want to see your face some more, like everybody knows who you are. Everybody knows Pedro Pascal is the Mandalorian, so you, they don't really need to see your face. Like they know they know. Oh, that's Pedro Pascal, and. So yeah, apparently he's throwing a fit. He's being difficult to work with. They kicked him off. And there's been, I mean, in Hollywood, there's been episodes where you know actors and directors will fight, and sometimes actually get in a fist fight, uh, or just actually be like you know uh, uh, Bruce Willis and uh, Aaron Bruce Willis is a douche. Yeah, he's a douchebag. Him and. Uh, um, uh, Kevin Smith, uh, they hated each other. Did not get along at all. So it's mostly because Bruce was being a dude. Because I do know who I am. I'm Bruce Willis, and literally, like Kevin Smith would bring, he, he'd be walk up, and Bruce would have the hand the script, and he'd start ripping pages out, throwing them on the ground. Like, what are you doing? We don't need all that. Oh, you know, whatever. And so yeah, so actors can be. Catherine Heigl is a perfect another example. She got fired from Grey's Anatomy because she started complaining she about the writers nice. and. Then she started complaining about the movies that she's in, you know. So Charlie Sheen, another perfect example, started being <laughs> winning. Yeah, started getting, you know, I don't know. They just they started thinking that the world revolves around them, that these series revolves around them, and they can't be replaced because their stardom is getting too big. So I don't. Know. I hope that's not the case. I hope this is all just garbage. Uh, but apparently. Uh, some people have said that on the inside have said that they cannot confirm or deny that Pedro Pascal is going to be the Mandalorian in season three. And that's weird. Do you think it'd be determined for sure? Be able to. It's a little weird. Yeah. You think, well, of course he would be. But, uh, you know, they're saying that it's kind of, kind of throw some things off. Maybe he's not. So apparently he's not going to be there in body. He is still going to voice him. But they're gonna have somebody else in the suit, so that he don't have to wear the helmet, he don't have to wear the uncomfortable uniform, and he don't have to work very much. He just has to come in and do some voiceovers, and that's it. Why? But I don't Why understand. would you do that? Like, he, like this. I mean, he already everybody kind of knew Pedro Pascal, but this series launched him into another stratosphere in fame. Like this series is what really solidified. I hope him. it's BS. I hope it is too. But if you think you can't be, I don't know. I don't understand that. If you think you can't be replaced from a a role that wears a helmet, right? You can very easily be replaced. Carl Urban would be a perfect replacement. He's already done work in Dread, 
uh, wearing a helmet. Oh, yeah. And he kind of has, he kind of looks like Pedro Pascal, and he kind of has his physique. But he'd be a, per, he'd be a great man. I was thinking about that the other day. Uh, he did Dread, which is fantastic. If you haven't seen Dread, like, there's Judge Dread. That was a great movie. I don't I know what Judge anybody Dredd. says. No, with, with Sylvester Stallone. Heck yeah. It was hilarious. But the problem a lot of people had with it is that in the comics, Judge Dredd never takes his helmet off. And so you never ever see him in the comics with his helmet off. I guess unless he gets knocked off, but he never actually takes it off. And so they were mad because Sylvester Stallone takes his helmet off. Of course he is. It's, Sylvester Stallone. Sylvester Stallone. He's gonna, <laughs> he, the studio wants to see his face, and I'm sure he wants to show his face. But the, and then when I heard they were making another Dread movie, I was like, I don't know, I really like the original. But now I watched it, and it's really good. It's very good. And he did great. Uh, uh, Carl Urban, yeah, he never did take the helmet off. It was just, he was in the helmet the whole time. It's super violent, and it was just pretty pretty cool story. I was like really surprised, <laughs> right? About how good that was. I wasn't expecting it to be that good. So yeah, he got him. He could replace you, Kit Harrington, play Game of Thrones. He could he could replace you, man. It's very easily replaceable. So I don't understand that attitude, but sometimes it happens. He had a whole all bit all bit of garbage. Yeah. I mean, he does a good job. I enjoy. It. Yeah, I liked I liked him. Uh, sometimes some some of this stuff happens. But like I said the other day, though, he doesn't have to wear the helmet all the time. There's stunt doubles that that wear yeah. it for him. Yeah. They like so, they, there's two of them, so yeah. they like rotate out because the helmet is heavy. Yeah, well that's that's kind of the thing they're gonna have to have the stunt double. <laughs> they're gonna have the stunt double body him while he voices it. You know, I don't know. So yeah, that's some big news coming out of the Mandalorian. We may be getting the we may be getting the rule change here. Uh, that might be the last season that you actually. I hope it's not true. I hope it's not either. Hope it, hopefully it is just a rumor. But uh, it's starting to like it started off a girl YouTuber. I'm not gonna say her name, but she she kind of pushed it out. But she's been wrong about stuff before. But she's been right about stuff. So people are like, yeah, I don't know. But as we progress, the story's starting to get a little bit more traction. And what the weird thing is is that uh, Disney or Lucas Films or Floney Favreau, nobody, even Pascal, nobody has said anything about it. It just act like it's not happening. So that's a thing that's, that's not sure. If, Surely they would have said something by now. Yeah, sure they come out and say, hey, this ain't true. This is garbage. We're doing a great time. He loves his helmet. As a matter of fact, he sleeps in his helmet. <laughs> he takes showers in his helmet. You know? And some people are like, you know, that's, that's just stupid. Just let him take his helmet off. Uh, it's like, does he shower in? And it, it, it doesn't matter. The main one, that's the main thing of Mandalorian is you, nobody's allowed to see the you helmet. without your helmet. It is part is their of life. your culture. It, yeah. Uh, so, I don't know. So, yeah, there's, there's no reason that uh, he should have seen with it off. I don't want it to have scenes with it. I like it. I'll, I think it's cool to ask the mystic, even though if you know, you know, you know the actor, even though I've already seen his face in the show, it still adds that kind of cool mystique about the character very much that's one, one, one thing that makes the mandalorians great one thing that made boba fett and Django fett great is well Django, you just see his face but one, <laughs> it's one of the things uh, like boba when the first original series came out uh the original sequel is that who is this person right like, what's he look like you know that's a that's awesome mysteriousness about it that makes you intrigued and the mandalorian came out it was dude that was, yeah it was awesome I loved it. Uh, I don't want to take his mask off, and I mean, if you got to, if you've got to uh, replace Pedro Pascal, that sucks because I like the guy. I hope it's not true, but uh, yeah, I like him. I like him a lot. Yeah. So yeah, that's it. That's a, that's a Star Wars update. That's all we got. You got anything else? Don't forget to come and watch us on Twitch. Yeah, check out some effing Thursday nights, 7 o'clock on Thursday nights for some effing wrestling. And uh, we'll catch you later. I'm Cinema Drew. I'm Jelly Huey. We're effing gaming. You should too.